much. All right. Do you uh, don't mind starting this up an opening statement about kind of how the fall is going in the 2016-17 uh, team? Okay. Yeah, we started uh, the day after Labor Day and um, into our October month, which is our team practice, and um, I'm very excited about this group. I think uh, it's the best group of uh, athletes that we've had um, for a while. Um, a lot of competition out there right now, a lot of quality depth. Um, I think we've um, got the pieces to the puzzle that um, I really feel that we can make a, a, a deep run if all goes well. Um, but there's no reason why we've got, we've got great pitching right now. We've got uh, great defense. I think our hitting is going to be really well. Uh, um, it will be well this year. And, um, you know, the intangibles we don't know yet, but I do know that we've got a lot of returners, uh, seven seniors, uh, along with a very talented group of um, freshmen that, depending on what poll you looked at, probably the top um, top three classes in the country. So um, I feel pretty good right now, and I like the way they've worked, and I um, like the chemistry we have right now. Um, they've set a very high standard, and have held each other to that, and so we're, we're excited. Where can McQuillan make the biggest jump from freshman to sophomore? Well, I think um, Taylor, uh, last year, Taylor's one of those pitchers that throws the ball through the zone, and um, the, the one element that, that she needs a little work on this year is getting ahead. And once she gets ahead, then she can get people to chase, and I think um, right now she's doing a much better job of that, um, using her rise ball a little more. Um, I think sometimes as a freshman you come into a program like this, you, you really don't know what's at the end of the tunnel and you think you're prepared for it, um, but it takes a year to kind of go through that um, and go through those stumbles and fumbles. And um, I think Taylor right now is a, a much more mature player that understands what it's going to take to, to compete at this level and, and win at this level. So I think she spent a lot more time on having a little more command early in the count. Um, and then her movement is the key to her. She's got really nasty movement, but um, you, you've got to be able to get ahead to do that. Is the Alyssa that you're seeing now the same Alyssa that you saw prior to the injury? Yeah, Alyssa's going to be, a, a, I mean, a, she's a good player. I mean, um, great power, uh, short, compact swing, um, doesn't chase at a lot of bad pitches, um, but she has definitely got a presence um, that... Uh, when she puts a bat in the hand, and, and to me, I think Alyssa's going to make uh, Kati even a better hitter. And um, you know, we have one of those lineups right now where you kind of pick your poison. Where I thought last year we, you know, people could throw around a few hitters, but but this year, I mean, we're going to be deep. Um, and in a little different um, lineup, I think uh, maybe not as much speed um, overall, but um, above average speed overall, um, but better hitting. Much better hitting. How does she make Kati better? Um, because uh, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna have to. If they don't throw to her, they're gonna throw to Kati. And if they don't want to throw to Kati, then you've got a Jess Harper, you got a Mo Mercado, um, you've got people that you can put behind her right now that are gonna protect both of them. And so I think people are gonna have to decide who they're gonna pitch to. You went back and forth a lot of times at, at first base. Yeah. What do, you, what do you see this well, year in terms of that position? Well, you know, first base right now, is, I, I think um, Joelle Christ has done a really nice job. Um, she's come back. She's um, much more mature, has slowed the game down, hit a couple home runs this past weekend. I mean, she's, she's, she's one of those kids that you kind of take for granted. I'm kind of a quiet um, player, um, you know, reminds me a lot of Sam Bannister. You know, came from the same gene pool, but, um, you know, Sam was kind of that kid that you, when you first saw her, you kind of go, eh, you know, she's okay, but, you know, you put her in a game, she's competitive, and, and last year I thought uh, Joelle did a great job coming in in some really crucial situations, had some big at-bats for us, and I think right now she's, she's playing the game with a lot more confidence. She's uh, in, I think, better shape um, and um, has a higher softball IQ, uh, obviously, than she did at this time last year. So I expect good things out of her. Nancy Bowling's the other one that's at first base, and Nancy a senior, you know, a kid that you you pull for because of 
everything she's gone through, but I think right now Nancy's playing good softball. And I think I can say that for every one of our seniors right now. You know, they've, I think they've spent the time and the energy and have had their face rubbed in the dirt and they want to leave, leave, leave their own legacy here. Um, and um, I think they have a chance this year of doing it. What was kind of your biggest takeaway from this past weekend in actually playing games against the opposition? Well, the depth. I mean, there's not a kid on our team that can't play. So, I mean, you can, I mean, there was a time in a game when they were throwing a lefty and I just said, all right, we're going to take all our lefties on, put all our righties in, and, and bam, bam, bam. You know, so we have a lot more matchups that we can do. The quality depth brings competition to practice each and every day. And when you have competition, kids get better, you know. And um, I like it because I don't have to watch a kid pout. Uh, I don't don't have to watch a kid go through the motions because they know damn well there's someone right behind them that can step in and play at any given moment. So everyone's on edge a little bit. No one feels like it's, you know, they're going to be there no matter what. And so I think it's a really, um, really good culture and a good environment right now for even our better players to get better. And, um, and you know, a good example I think would be our, we've got a seven game series going on right now um, and I put all the young kids against the older kids. And right now our younger kids are up two games to none. And so that kind of tells you the quality of depth that we have. Um, and, and I'm very excited. I mean, I'm really excited about it because I think we have some quality players. I think recruiting has finally got back where it needs to be. Has that edge of competition been missing in the past few oh, years? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We had our hands full. Uh, Hands tied many a times where we couldn't really make any moves and, and um, you know, you're just hoping that no one got hurt. And, you know, right now, I, I still hope that no one gets hurt, but I'm, you know, right now it's just the hot hand's going to be playing. And I think the competition and practice every day has really made this team so much better. Um, and if you watch our drill work, and I mean, you watch everything. The time they walk on the field, the time they leave, um, there's a standard that has been raised where I, I was used to seeing it, and it's taken a while to get it back. You used to be able to get it done with maybe 13, 14, 15. Yeah. Why is it different now that you need 22, 23? I don't know. Probably the culture, you know. I think back in the day, there was, I mean, there were, you motivated kids back in the day a lot different than you do today. Um, and I think this culture right now, the more I look at it, the more I, I, I kind of see everything kind of revolving in a circle, where um, we're getting back to the, um, the, the strong discipline. Um, they, they, they like when you put demands on them. They do a better job when you script their day. Um, you don't give them the flexibility that, you know, I think maybe there was a time when we thought that was the way that you get to this generation is, letting them kind of find their way. But I'm, I, I think I'm, I'm exactly wrong with that. I think they work better um, when you script what they need to do. And then when you have the competition there, it, it has definitely elevated how they do things. And to me, that's the biggest difference in this ball club right now. Beyond what you guys do as, as a coaching staff uh, with Taylor is what kind of a mentor is O'Toole oh. in that regard? Well, O'Toole is um, tremendous. I mean, the one thing I can say about, uh, you know, our good players right now are also good teammates. Um, I think they've finally realized that uh, the, the, the ultimate prize is how good we can become as a team. And I think a good example of that was last year I made them all earn their A. Um, and they, it, it took till January for them to earn their last A to, to make this team. Um, this year I brought the freshmen in and I wanted them to earn their A. And without me saying anything, our returners took their uh, practice tops and turned them inside out until they help the freshmen earn their A. So they're not going to wear the A until everyone has it. And to me, that was a gesture of team. And that's something that we've always been trying to seem to be getting across in the last two or three years. And so I think they kind of understand um, 
you know, that the best team, that the last team that's going to be standing at the end of the year is not so much going to be the team with the greatest players, but the team that plays the best together. And so all those elements are important. And when you have talent that plays like a team, and um, it's pretty special to watch. And I thought this weekend I, I had fun. I mean, it was, I hadn't seen that in a long time. Uh, you know, and um, no one was moping, no one was worrying about their, their playing time. They were just waiting for their opportunity. And then when they got into the game, they were ready. You know, they executed and they didn't look scared. They didn't look like they were um, trying too hard or the game got too quick on them. And to me, that's why I, th I really believe this team has um, got a chance to be in the special team. So I would urge people to, if they don't have season tickets, to buy them. <laughs> it's going to be a good team. I asked you this last year, but it's kind of in the news and relevant again. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on Jessica Mendoza calling baseball for his team? Well, I've had a chance to, to um, spend some time with her on the road. In fact, I was in Chicago, uh, went to the Cubs game she was doing, and we got a chance to visit. She brought me up to the booth, and I got a chance to watch her interact um, during her pregame. And Jess is a very intelligent um, young lady that um, understands the game. And not only does she understand the game, she works hard at the game. And so um, I feel, and I've listened to her numerous times, and she'll reach out to me, you know, and talk, talk about hitters and this and that, but. I think Jess has done a wonderful job, and I think people are um, need to look at the, the, the and, and listen to her. You know, she really has great insight, um, and um, she knows the game, and, and she works at the game really, really hard. And so I'm 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 excited for her. I mean, I never would have dreamed that there, she would be on the on the Sunday night games, um, and it took a few people to kind of falter. For her to have that opportunity, but I think she's done nothing but blossom in that role, and um, you know I think she's she's a great professional. So, what's your response then to some of the vitriol she receives in social media? I think it's crazy. You know, I'm not a big fan of social media for that simple reason: people take pot shots, and um, it's very unfair. It's very unwarranted, and I think it's um, people that don't even know the game, don't know what they're talking about. And sometimes the emotional, the emotional um, reaction to some of that is always, well, you know, she's never played the game at that level. And, you know, you hear that all the time, but, but Jessica, I can, can hold her own, you know. And I think she's done a wonderful job. When you were coaching her, what was the best part of her approach? Well, she's a sponge. You know, I mean, truthfully, she, that, that was the one thing, no matter how good she was, she was always striving to get better, but she was always a student of the game. She always wanted to know the whys, you know? I mean, you could give her five different ways of doing something, and, and she would kind of look at all those five ways and, and know, want to know why this was better than this. And all the way up until the, the end of her career, I think she was one of those athletes that never knew she was as good as she was and was always searching to get better in, in everything she did. And she did everything 100%. I mean, she's a kid that absolutely played the game hard. And, and I think that's one of the, the common threads that you find when you coach an Olympic team is uh, twofold. One is, is a strong passion for the game. They all love playing the game. But the other thing is their, their emotional stability. They, you know, they, they've kind of found themselves physically, they found themselves mentally, and they found themselves emotionally. And that's why, you know, the, the average age of the Olympic team was 27 years old. So you had mature athletes that could also control their thoughts come game time. And they never got too high, never got too low. But the neatest thing to watch was that you saw the same look on their face, whether it was a practice or they were in the um, Olympic arena. They, every day they brought it, you know, and, and so that was the fun part. I mean, you didn't have to motivate that group. In fact, you had to challenge them because if you didn't challenge them, they get bored. And to me, that's kind of where we're at right now, finally, with this group, is they like to challenge, you know, where 
for a while there, they were kind of crumbling with the challenge. Uh, and I really believe this. Um, she's a special person. Softball's back in the Olympics yeah. now. Your reaction that day, and then will you have any was, role with that team yeah. moving forward? Absolutely. <laughs> um, overly excited for the sport. Um, you know, it was it was a sad day when it was taken away, and, you know, I, I still, you kind of look back and you, you were wondering why it happened, and then you kind of realized why it happened. It was a political battle, and we lost a political battle. Um, and um, when it got, when it was going to Tokyo, I really felt that, that that would be the time that we would have a chance to get back, and I'm hoping that L.A. gets it in 24, because that means that, probably the next eight years that softball will be back in. Um, but uh, I was excited for the young kids that, and some other people. Uh, you know, I'm excited for a, a Ken Erickson and, and John Redman and, and, and some of the people that have kind of kept USA softball uh, on the map while we weren't a highly visible sport like we were during the Olympic days. Um, but they've been challenging for world championships. In fact, they just won the world championship, um, got it back from Japan. And then I saw today that Japan was still ranked number one in the world and we're number two, even after beating them. Um, but I'm excited for those people that they're going to get an opportunity to um, put on the USA uniform and, and represent our country at, a, at an Olympic Games because the Olympics is just so different than any other event that I've ever been involved with. And, I think the challenge of it is, is, you know, you practice for four years for that one little moment in time. You got a, a week to put it together. And, um, you know, in 2004 in Athens, it was, God, we did everything right. And, you know, we walked in there and had a fabulous performance and dominated the world. And, you know, we had the same process in 2008, but you run into a hot pitcher on a given week. You know, and you end up winning the, the silver medal, and it was like uh, people were looking at it like, God, I don't want this silver medal, you know. And, but after a while, you kind of go, you know, it, it's still a special moment um, to even medal uh, in the Olympics. Um, but for me now, to, to get a chance to see us back in and, and have a new group of kids be able to put on that uniform, because that's the one thing you're going to see is a whole different group of athletes. Um, hopefully some that are here, you know, at Arizona. Um, and I think it, it's going to be a wonderful event. Um, baseball is well-loved in Japan, baseball and softball. So I think we've learned that we can maybe play the event on the same venue to save money, um, you know. And so I, I, I think it probably was a shot in arm that everyone needed to, to say, you know what, Maybe we won't take it for granted that we are part of the Olympics and that we're going to work really hard to to um, to grow the sport in the European countries, which is what we need to do um, to stay around. And um, I think now it's not lip service, but people are really feel the sense of urgency to make that happen. So hopefully, it'll help the whole sport. Will you have a role with Team USA? Uh, at this moment, um, I you know I. I've been involved with uh, USA Softball since I retired in 2008. I write an article once a month for um, USA Softball, um, a column that's sponsored by Liberty Mutual. And I've um, been doing that ever since I uh, quit coaching the, the Olympic team. But I don't really have a role right now. I don't know if, if I will or if I want, you know. Um, I'd like to be a spectator, um, but I do know that it was Ten years of my life that went by so fast that it got a little scary for me, and um, you know I I want to get this program back where it deserves to be, and I know that you no one has the energy to do both at the level that you need it. If this program didn't care whether you went to the College World Series and won a national championship, it'd be different. But that's not the case here, and I think that's one thing I learned from that experience was that I can't do both. You got to kind of pick what you're going to do. So we'll see. Jay Johnson said you're his new best friend. He, said he likes to pick your brain a lot. What? I, 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 on the flip side of that, what Jesus. do you admire about how he went about getting to the World Series? Well, I I love that he does his um, 
his own thing. Um, you know, Jay reminds me, and I've never told him this, but I'll tell you guys. He reminds me of the guy that, that I started coaching with in baseball. Uh, in a positive way, Kenny Richardson. I mean, almost the same kind of look. Um, always the wheels are turning. Um, very um, kind of low-keyed, you know. But but Jay, uh, I was so impressed last year and with a lot of things. You know, I, I think he's put together a great staff. Uh, he's a. I think they've. He's shown that he's a a, a very good motivator and and understands the mental side of the game and can get this generation where it needs to be. And, um, you know, I was marveled during the College World Series that their positioning of their players were spot on. So that tells me that there's a, a lot of great preparation that goes into the game with that staff. And so there's nothing really that I to like. There's a lot that I want to learn, you know. And um, we've, we've had a great relationship ever since he's came here. And, love to sit around and talk the game and find out what they're doing and you know I've been able to help him a little bit with you know being around here for a while um, but he's just a he's a good baseball guy I mean if there's one thing I miss about baseball it's the people and he's one of those baseball people and you know I go down to high corporate and I sit in the offices and talk to their coaching staff it's you know it brings me back to my baseball days where quality people that love the game and um, will spend countless hours no matter what it takes and so it was nice to see um, but I told him you know now you've set the bar big fella you gotta you gotta keep that going and I'm sure they will and I you know the other thing is great recruiter I mean I was in Yuma with him um, we went to a fundraiser uh, last week or so and you know, he, he was on the phone constantly, so that that's always a good sign too. Yeah. And you said uh, recruiting for you is getting back to the point where it needs to be. Yeah. What would you attribute that to? Well, I think a lot of things. Um, one, um, spending the time and the effort um, that's necessary. Um, uh, I think uh, Caitlin and Stacy have done a great job um, of being out and. Um, doing a good job of identifying talent. Um, and then we've been able to close. You know, I mean, that's the, that's the challenge. I mean, we're recruiting the same people that, that the SEC's recruiting, that's UCLA's recruiting. I mean, it's, we're recruiting the very best in our sport. So now they're gonna come to Arizona and we've gotta find a way to tell them that, you know, there's a reason why you wanna be here. And I think the Lappin Center, um, the, the upgrades that have happened to our facility <coughs> Um, came at the very right time because uh, unfortunately at this stage of the game kids don't really care at the, the culture I'm dealing with right now they don't care how many championships you won you know half of them don't even remember who well they do know who Jenny Finch is but if you ask who Lisa Fernandez was they probably didn't don't know you know so it's today's world is is the facilities that uh, are popping up around this country and um, you know in 93 Helen Brand Stadium was the very best in the country. And um, right now it needs a little facelift, so we're trying to make that happen. And it's a very big part of recruiting right now, and I think Pac-12 is starting to realize that. You know, uh, I think the Pac-12 as a group um, needs to realize that there's a lot of parity in this sport. And so I think you're going to see more and more people understanding that it, there's a price that you have to pay to be successful. And I think back in the day we've, we've been, and I think right now we're getting back to that. And I like a lot of the things that are happening around here. And I think we have a lot to sell young kids. And it's just finding the right person that is the right fit for us too. And we've been very fortunate. I think this last freshman class is, was a pretty good haul for us. And we've, you know, we're recruiting now kids that are in eighth grade, you know. I don't, that scares me. I, 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 I'm not smart enough to know that an eighth grader can play this game and when they get to college, but unfortunately that's where we're at. So we're trying to project these kids. But on the other hand, I'm being very honest with um, kids and parents to say, you know what, if you don't get better, you know, then this verbal doesn't mean anything because 
It's my livelihood. You know, we got to end up with the best college players. So it's a challenge. I mean, it's, there's a lot of moving pieces right now that are interesting. But I like where we're at right now. I really do. And I'm very excited about this upcoming year and look forward to, um, I think, making a strong run. Was Oregon the place that kind of set the bar with facilities? Oregon, well, Oregon, yeah. Oregon, absolutely. I mean, uh, the, in, in the Pac-12, they they stepped up and did what they needed to. And um, uh, everyone else is talking about it. <laughs> but no one's really done it. I mean, we, we made a little step with the Lappin Center. I think that was a huge thing for us. But no one's other than Oregon has really come in and said, here's the 17 million, let's go get it. Um, and really, we don't need that much. I mean, we're give me three and a half million and we can make this facility right where it needs to be. Because this facility has got a lot of history and it's, it, to me, it's like Wrigley Field, you know, I, I don't want to change the atmosphere. It's great to be on campus and there's a lot of things I love, but we're landlocked, and so we have to be kind of think about what we can do to make it better. And for me right now, my, my next big venture is to put in a new press box, um, put in some, I'd like to put in a couple of um, suites on both sides of that, have an open patio area um, to the size of those that we can sell and entertain. And then um, shade structure, new seating, um, new dugouts and away we go you know because with that the, with the new uh, press box will come a new front and uh, that place will look like it's brand new so I've got the pictures I mean I'm not sitting around <laughs> I know what it's, I know what I wanted to look yeah. like and and we're, we're making progress does that have to be brought out in waves, or is that something you could tackle all in one? Well, we could tackle it all in one if we can, but I think right now it's, I'm tackling it as I raise the money. And so, uh, you know, Dr. Lappin was a, a, a huge factor, but we've had many other people, too, that were involved with that initial gift. And we've got a little money to make right now that we need to add to, um, but I really believe that that's, that's going to be a... Um, necessity uh, down the road to be able to compete with the SEC. Is there a timetable for that, or it's just right yeah. now? <laughs> <laughs> right now. <laughs> right now. I'm working on it daily. Yeah. You know. Anything else for Coach? All right. Okay. Hey, thanks. Thanks, thanks for being here.